Welcome to The Public's Health, the show that puts you, the public, back into public health. I'm Dr. Tony Eiden, the Director and Health Officer for Alameda County Public Health Department. And today we're taking on a subject that is of great interest to many of us in public health, as well as to many of you in the community, and that is the health of moms and babies. We're joined today by three outstanding public health nurses that run critical programs that are focused on protecting the health of moms and babies and very vulnerable families. Joining me today is Yvonne Youngblood, the director of our Black Infant Health Program, Nicole Smith, a public health nurse in our IPOP program, and Jan Walkenauer, the public health director of our Special Start program. Welcome, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yvonne, you run a program called Black Infant Health. Why do we have a program called Black Infant Health? What does it do? Um, the Black Infant Health program um, exists because of the um, high rates of babies dying, black babies dying, and the uh, high rates of black babies being born to low birth weight. And so um, the program was created to um, bring in a multidisciplinary team to um, reduce those rates. Okay, so a recognition that low birth weight, infant mortality is higher in the African American population, and a public health challenge was to figure out why that was and how to introduce programs and services that would improve the outcomes of uh, African American um, births. Mm -hmm. so, so how do you do that in that program? Um, the way that we do that is that we have um, public health nurses, we have community outreach workers that actually go into the homes of pregnant and parenting women. Excellent. Okay, so we're now going to see a, a roll in uh, talking about some of the uh, services provided by our programs. I was told he was born at A57 and he was two pounds, two ounces. When he came out, real limp, not breathing. They had to give him a few blow bys to help him breathe before they actually pronounced him alive. And once they did, he was 14 inches, and he immediately had to be intubated and rushed to the NICU, where he spent 11 weeks. Is it something I did? And I always blame myself, thinking it was something that I did. Me being young, I used to smoke. And knowing, finding out six weeks you're pregnant, and knowing what you did six weeks before, it's like, wow. You didn't have a few beers, probably, and a few cigarettes, and Lord knows what else. And now you find out you're pregnant right where the baby is in court, growing, form, my toast, everything, just you was doing those bad things. So I don't know if I'm at fault or if I'm not at fault, but they call it preeclampsia, just something women go through in their first, you know, childbirth. And, and I met other women who went through it, and some lost their kids, and some have healthy kids and some have kids with problems and it's like I still don't understand it's like you can't prevent it but you know about it and these are the results it's like that's something I would never understand but without IPOP I probably wouldn't have the courage to really keep pushing and to have them born so small and then not connect them with them not being able to feed them like you plan to breastfeed you know, not being able to produce that, not feeling unworthy, sort of having like postpartum, you know, d depression. And, you know, these people never experiencing that. How can you, you know, really have a support group around you? So IPOP was really there for me. And I would recommend it to any young parent, any parent who need help, anybody who's pregnant and scared and don't know what to do. I was working at a nursing facility and um, which had became stress on my body and I didn't know why because of the lifting and I um, started spotting for about three weeks. I took myself to the doctor and found out that I was pregnant. They considered me as high risk. I was off work. I ended up almost losing my job. They didn't want to pay for maternity leave. We didn't have any money because I got married and he didn't have a job either. Because of that, I went through a lot of stress. I'm happy that Erica came because when she came out, the cord was around her neck twice. Her APGAR scale was pretty low. She was four pounds and 18 inches long. 
She was breathing perfect. Everything was perfect. She stayed in the hospital for about 20 days. Nicole told me that if I kept pictures with me or stayed in a quiet place, I would be able to pump milk. She was excited. She kept me motivated about pumping and going to see Erica. IPOP is still helping me, and I know that they'll be around even when my other baby gets two, because he's five months. He was born late, but that's because Nicole warned me about things that I should and should not be doing. Some things that are dangerous are lifting, pulling vacuum cleaners, not getting enough rest. She told me to drink lots of water. I was more in tune with um, signs of preterm labor. Her calling me also kept me happy. And just the key to having a healthy pregnancy is just being happy and you know, taking the pills, the prenatals, and treating your body right. And we're back. So Yvonne, we've just seen how some of the lives of some of the families that we're dealing with are very complex mm -hmm. and understanding for anybody who's having a baby um, what one needs to do to protect themselves is very important. How does Black Infant Health work with these families in the homes? Um, when we're in the homes, we actually, if there's a nurse in the home, a public health nurse, she's going to do our nursing assessment. Um, that means she's going to um, check the mom's heart rate, blood pressure, um, take vital signs, and if there's a baby in the home and the baby's born, she's also going to do a, a, an assessment on the baby to make sure that they're all healthy and they're doing okay. Um, we provide education. Um, we, we, if a mom is smoking or if she's um, drinking, um, we instruct her on ways to reduce those behaviors, um, and we instruct her why that they're not good to do, especially if she's pregnant or even after pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. So you form relationships with these moms, and you help them sort of shepherd through the process of, of uh, essentially raising very young children. Mm -hmm. and, and in order for us to go into the homes, we have to build that trust with the with our clients, um, and that way they, they open up more to us, and that way the it's easier for them to listen to what we have to say and and to make those behavior changes and for lifelong, not just for the immediate while they're pregnant. Great. Nicole, you you participate in a program called Improving Perinatal Outcomes Project, is that correct? Improving Pregnancy Outcomes Program. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> and we've just seen um, one of, or two of your clients um, tell us a little bit about how they've interacted with the program. Um, well, I, I like that clip because uh, those are two of my clients, and it really does show the reality of, of um, pregnancy and low birth weight in Alameda County, and they're, they're the reason why we have the program, why it exists. It's very similar to the Black Infant Health Program in that we were created to help reduce infant deaths in Alameda County, but ours is different because we target certain zip codes, mm -hmm. and these zip codes have higher rates of preterm births and higher rates of low uh, birth weight babies under five pounds and also higher rates of um, infant mortality, infant death. So uh, my clients, one of the ways that I've helped them is basically to just try and be there emotionally for them, um, also to guide them medically. So I'll monitor their, like Yvonne was saying, monitor their blood pressure, their heart rate, the um, uh, fetal heart rate, that sort of thing while they're pregnant. And then once they have the baby, we do a lot of teaching, make sure that the babies get their shots on time make sure that the babies are healthy and if they need any, um, if they need health insurance, if they need referrals to doctors or to social services or mental health services. Sometimes we're referring them to domestic violence um, shelters, that sort of thing. So we're trying to give them as much support as we can so that they can have a healthy pregnancy and have a healthy baby. And we can see them for up to two years after the baby's born. Well, excellent. Jen, you run a program called Special Start. Yes. What is Special Start? Well, Special Start is a, a program that is um, sub half in public, the public health department, and we have a counterpart at Oakland Ch Children's Hospital. And we work with families who have very medically fragile infants who have been in a neonatal intensive care unit in our county. Um, and these families additionally um, face a lot of social challenges, um, are, are high risk from that point of view. And the infants, because of either their prematurity or because of other birth complications, are also at risk of developmental delay. So who gets into these neonatal intensive care units? What, what, what are the kinds of babies that you're seeing in that setting? 
Wow, there's great variety. Um, oftentimes we have babies who end up in the neonatal intensive care unit because of a medical problem that the mother has during her pregnancy. For example, um, pregnancy-induced hypertension, mom's blood pressure becomes so high that um, the, it, it sort of threatens the, the health of the baby that she's carrying and her own health. And so the, either the baby is spontaneously born early or um, there's a decision to deliver the baby early by a cesarean section. Um, sometimes we have moms who have chronic illness Sometimes um, babies have been exposed um, in the um, womb to um, either infection or uh, sometimes uh, illicit drugs, sometimes actual prescription drugs. Um, oftentimes they're born low birth weight or prematurely because of cigarette smoking. Um, so tell there's us any number of, <coughs> of, of, of causes. So babies are born at different weights, and all of us that have had children know that that can vary depending on a number of variables. What is a low birth weight baby? What's very low birth weight? What's extremely low birth weight? Well, we usually measure it in grams, but I think pounds are going to be easier for people. Mm -hmm. um, the average term baby, we usually um, expect to be around seven to eight pounds. So a low birth weight baby is a baby that weighs about five pounds or less. Um, a very low birth weight baby probably weighs in the, in the neighborhood of about three to three and a half pounds. And an extremely uh, low birth weight baby, or what we call micropremie, um, weighs around two pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are very small babies. So you all run programs where you actually go, or at least these two programs, go to people's homes. Does the special start mm -hmm. go into people's homes as well? Absolutely. So give us quickly a sense of, of why that's important. Well, we really feel like um, it gives us an opportunity to really see the challenges that, that families face in raising these very fragile children. It gives us an opportunity to provide services in a more comfortable setting for families in their home setting. It helps us to see what maybe are some of the resources that the family could use some help with. Um, and also, I want to be sure and let you know that um, our program uses um, a multidisciplinary staff. We have um, we have nurses that work with families. We have family advocates um, who speak languages other than English. Um, we have um, an infant mental health specialist or social worker would probably be a more common term for most, most people. We have substance abuse counselors because we know that substance exposure puts babies at risk prenatally and, and after birth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we what, what are, take many approaches. What are some of the other things that make it important to be in the homes of these families, to see their neighborhoods and communities? Well, going into the homes, you're able to see the environment that these clients are living in and how they're raising their children and, and what, what is coming into the family, what's affecting the family as a whole. Because you're not just treating, serving the client, you're serving the baby, the grandmother, the aunt and uncle, uncle whoever else is in the home with her as well. And, um, and we're, we're able to see actually what the client is, what the exposure, the exposure to them and, and why they might not be getting prenatal care or why they're, you know, doing drugs because it could be the involvement of the whole household. And so by going in the house, we're able to address not just the client, but we're able to address everyone that's in the household and state the importance of her getting prenatal care or the importance why she shouldn't be doing things that might uh, um, affect okay. the baby. Okay, we're going to go see a segment, a very creative program that uh, IPOP runs right now, and then we'll come back to you, Nicole, and you can tell us a little bit about it. Okay. So I'm a mother of two, single mother of two. I am 31 weeks, which is about seven and a half, seven months and three weeks pregnant. My son name is Yasir Manson Powell, and he is three days old. I had him on June 25th. Yeah, that's Yasir. He's sleeping now. He's hungry, ready to go home. I first got involved with the program three years ago where I have my th my now three-year-old child and it's been a great, it's been great. For the first two years or so of his life, they 
watched after us and made sure we were okay. If we needed anything, they were there to provide it for us. So it's been good. I think it's a really wonderful po program for mothers, you know, because then they help you um, learn about the baby. They teach you different stuff. There's a lot of benefits involved as well. Sandra's more like a mother than a public health nurse. You know, I could call her with anything, personal problems, other than, you know, like baby drama. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's been really good. Like, I had tough times where I wanted to quit school or, you know, like, I was losing focus. So she helped me stay focused, encouraged, and I don't know. Like, my grandmother passed in, like, 05, and she helped me through that. You know, you learn different things about different pregnancies, and actually the um, iPod program was very beneficial for as I lost my mother four years ago so far. It's like an extra support. It was wonderful for our support, and if you need advice or if they can help you with anything, that's wonderful. Single mothers, it's kind of hard, you know, like, you figure, like, once you're pregnant that that person will be with you forever. You never think that you will have to raise your own children or whatever, like, by yourself. Um, and I have two boys, so, you know, I have to be strong and stay encouraged. Because it's a beautiful experience. You meet a whole lot of different people with different attitudes about pregnancy, about life, and a whole bunch of things, just different objectives and perspectives on life, period. I just got accepted to Hardin Simmons in uh, Texas, and it's really big. I won an essay competition, so I, during the process of going to Texas to write the essay, I got accepted to Hardin Simmons. So for the spring of 2009, me and my babies are moving to Abilene, Texas to go. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited. Like, I want to miss Sandra and everybody, but, you know, I'm doing it. They do have um, a baby shower that they do, you know, that they do for mothers. So I would think it would be nice for someone new to pregnant, to baby motherhood, pregnancy to come and join the program. So for all the mothers out there, you can do it too. They just teach you everything and the program is really wonderful. So for all the mothers who are interested, just please sign up for the iPod program. It's a really good program. Yeah. Okay, so we're joined now by Janet Brown, who's gonna help us understand the data in a minute um, so that we have a better sense of how these programs have demonstrated their effectiveness. But before we do that, let's go to Nicole. That was such an interesting segment, uh, baby showers. Why, why does the IPOP program conduct baby showers? Government running baby showers? Well, the community baby shower is really one of our exciting events that we offer four times a year. And we've had 17 of them so far. They've been very successful. And what we're doing, it's not just an opportunity for the, the ladies in the um, target zip codes who are pregnant to come and win prizes and have fun and play games, but it's also an opportunity for them to learn about their pregnancy. So one of the things that we do is that we do a lot of teaching at these baby showers. We teach about breastfeeding, we teach about uh, what to do when you're pregnant, good nutrition, we teach about um, what not to do, so the risks of smoking, drinking, and doing drugs when you're pregnant, and we teach about the development of the baby. So we also, it also is an opportunity for us to teach the fathers because we have a boot camp for new dads that we run at the same time. So we have the mother there, we have the father of the baby, and the mother can bring her children, and we have childcare provided. So it's really a wonderful opportunity for the whole family to come and, and be together in this event. How important is it to try to break down the concept of social isolation, the fact that people may feel that they're alone with these challenges. Do the baby showers work to try to address that? They really do because they bring people together and we have all the pregnant women come and sit 
together so they can get to know each other and talk about their pregnancy. They ask a lot of questions. Should I do this? Should I do that when I'm pregnant? What does this mean? And I think just when people ask questions, they start talking to each other about their pregnancies and it really does bring them together. And we, it also leads into other things like we have a pregnancy basics class that we'll tell them about while they're there and they can sign up for those and that brings them together once again with other pregnant women in the community so that they're not so isolated and they can see that people are going through the same, same things that they are. Brilliant. So Janet, we've heard a lot about these programs and why it's so important to work with moms and kids. Tell us a little bit about the data in Alameda County. What do we know? Well, we know, um, as the first slide shows, that the number of infant deaths have gone down tremendously by about half in the last decade. So that's the good news story. Um, it's leveled off in the last couple of years. So the, the flip slide to that is what's causing these infant deaths. And the second slide you'll see shows the percentage of low birth weight. Well, unfortunately, we haven't made a difference. There's been no change over the last 15 years in Alameda County and the same thing, same trends all over the U.S. So why, why is that and what can we do to change that, I think is what's important to address here. So the third slide looks at prenatal care. Um, and we've moved from 85% in the early 90s to about 90% now. And I think that's probably as good as we can do um, for reasons that Yvonne mentioned about transportation, getting women uh, to medical appointments or not having childcare. So what are the kinds of things that we need to do next? Let me ask you about the uh, prenatal care um, data. So what the uh, slide shows is the percentage of, of pregnant women entering prenatal care in the first trimester. That's right, in the first three weeks, uh, 12 weeks. In. And that's 90% now mm -hmm. in Alameda County. That's right. Okay, so we're, we're, we're well. reaching the, the limits of, of how effective we can be there. So uh, please go on. So I think they, what's really exciting is this last slide that shows data from uh, the BIH program, and it shows the, as we mentioned before, African Americans have much higher risk of low birth weight babies. So the top line shows the percentage of low birth weight babies in the county, and it's, it hovers around 12%, and you see that for every year. And then you look at the second line just below it, and it's the percentage of low birth weight babies that the, the Black Infant Health Program has seen. And you can see that it's much lower, and every year it gets a little bit lower. So what we're seeing is a big success in this program. So it's something that's very hard to change, because low birth weight is caused by many different reasons, some mm -hmm. of them we've hit on. I mean, some, some of it's individual behavior, some of it's um, stress that the women experience, the level of violence in the community, um, economic factors such as unemployment. And here's a program. Um, that's able to go in and to make a real difference in these women and these families' lives enough to successfully reduce something as difficult to change as low birth weight. Well, that's fascinating. So what Janet's telling us, nationally there's a, essentially a plateauing, a no real change in low birth weight outcomes. Yet amongst the women that you have um, formed relationships with in the Black Infant Health Program, mm -hmm. we're seeing a reduction in low birth weight outcomes. Tell us a little bit about how you're doing that. Um, we're doing that by educating our women. Um, we're going in and teaching health education um, just about themselves and how to take care of themselves. Uh, we're, we're educating about um, just um, medical issues that are prevalent in the African American population like diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure. And then we're also introducing them to, to things that they might not have even thought of, like going to school, getting, you know, fathering their, furthering their education, um, um, getting them into employment or technical training. Um, and um, that affects the birth weight of their children? Yes, it does. Well, that's yes. fascinating. Now, you see how many children a year? Um, or families? Uh, families, we see approximately an estimate of 200 on, on an average. And, and that's an and ongoing. Roughly how many African American births are there in Alameda County every year? Uh, roughly around 2,000 births a year. Okay, so you're seeing roughly 10% of, of the yes. births, and you're having an impact on low birth weight in that 10%. Yes, we are. So it would seem to me that your program should be expanded. It should. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree with you on that. We should, it should be expanded. We should be able to serve more. We know the women are out there. 
we just don't have the staff to serve them and yes now IPOP is seeing some of the, the same families as well right we are and do we know how how well you do in terms of low birth weight uh, Jan do you have any data on that? not yet that's we that's what we're starting to do in public health is to try to evaluate each of our programs and see how successful we are so we've started with BIH and we're planning to look at IPOP and see that we can find the same types of great results. But I do know that we haven't had any infant mortalities in our program. Okay, so this is this is fascinating. We, we really ought to explore this in, in more depth and, and in fact we will. But what other things um, in closing do you think that the public needs to know about your programs and um, maybe how to get in touch with you if in fact they have a neighbor or a friend or someone that they think needs to know more about this? Uh, I, I, we are here to enhance, we are, our program is here to enhance what they're already doing. They're in prenatal care, um, so we're here to provide support, encouragement, um, teach our women how to advocate for themselves. Um, how to go out in the community and get the, the services that are needed for them and them fa their families and, um, and um, education. And if they wanted to contact us, they can always go through their doctor's office, through social services, and uh, they can be referred to us. Right? Thank you so much. We've had wonderful guests today, and this is, in, in fact, the uh, first of a two-part episode. So. Uh, Stay with us. We're going to run on this theme again next month. Uh, this is the Public's Health, a production of the Alameda County Public Health Department. We're so glad that you joined us, and keep coming back. Bye-bye.